Yeah, welcome back to Career Builders. This is episode 118, so we're back at building a little bit. Um, I wanted to, I've been wanting to work on the home base a little, and so I was having problems with this tank. So this is supposed to be my diesel tank, and um, you know I put a spawner in here, and for some reason when you build these structures and the structures workbench, this was not allowing me to put any fuel in here. So I tried a couple things. I put a spawner in there. It was spawning with nothing. And then I, I plumbed it all up. It has a pump and valves and everything else. And I could launch a barge and then pump fuel all the way through the lines up in up to the tank. And I could even stand in the tank. And if I read the, uh, the um, what do you call it here, fluid port. <laughs> Couldn't think of fluid port for a second. Uh, if you even looked at the fluid port, it was getting 23 liters per second, but it wasn't filling the tank. So I think that must be some limitation with um, building these structures where you can't build custom tanks. So what I did was I just filled it with large tanks, and that's working now. So I have a, a, a way to store fuel. So I have about uh, 1,400 gallons in here. And so that's going to give me plenty of fuel. So, for example, I keep having a either you know, pop jerry cans or something to get the Katie did refueled. Katie did tends to be the thing that needs to be refueled quite often because I can't recall it in the workbench here unless I spawn it on a barge. So what I end up doing is um, I have to go somewhere to go refuel. Up and uh, so now I can uh, hook to this port here and I can refuel the Katie did. So that's something I did. Um, I did this off screen. I built a little crane. I'm going to change it. So I want to be able to, to load things on to the island. Um, with this crane, I can load on uh, Rigeau. And so I want to work on this crane a little. And I want to redo it. I'm not thrilled with this. So this is my test world. So I can easily just um, build whatever and test it. And it's not going to cost me any, any coin. Let me also do a quick little paint here. I'll paint up this... problems already and so um, you know I did a bunch of this off screen so kind of show you what I did so this is just the valving system so this allows me to use one large um, pump so it will uh, if you want to pump in so let's say this tank is empty uh, I can spawn a barge with fuel plug in right there uh, you, you uh, click on to pump in it will turn on the pump uh, fluid comes in here, goes out, goes up into the tank. Uh, if you want to pump down, it goes this way, and uh, it goes this way, and then through, and then uh, out, and that will energize this one here. Gravity flow will probably fill the Katie did, um, or you can use this here to um, to fill a boat. So uh, let me see what this is. This I had connected to something, and now I don't, so that can go. Okay. So uh, I want to work at this crane a little. Um, this works. Um, the Rigeau is not very heavy, so this is easy for it to work. But I'm not thrilled with this design. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of redo this. And uh, so some people had been asking previously about, um, you know, how to get a good strong crane, how to uh, do some crane stuff. So I figure we'll go through that. And then if I want to load something on to the shore here, if, if the weather's terrible and I want to keep Vergeau out in the world, I can always uh, load it up onto the um, up onto the land. And so I need to make this a little taller because the... Um, I want to make this just a little taller here because, um, you know, before I was having it so the boom would tip up and down, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to keep it a uh, hard solid boom. That just makes a little bit um, a little bit stronger. And so if I do that though, I do need to make it taller. So I'm kind of make it uh, more of a tower crane design here. All right, so there we go. And I think what I'm going to do instead of turning the whole base because I've changed the design of it here, what I'm going to do is going to I'll make just the top of the crane rotate like a tower crane would do. Before the base would actually turn, wasn't that tall. Now I don't want that whole base to turn. I want uh, this top section to turn. So 
This is also going to be remote controlled, so I'm going to work on that some. And um, nope, I don't want those to be that color. All right, and so um, I'm also going to make this remote controlled, and that way I can uh, kind of walk around and hook things up to it and do all that and not have any issues. And so we'll just kind of do this. So it'll be a little bit of a work on remote control as well. I haven't done any remote control stuff in a little while. I'm trying to kind of finish up some odds and ends. Um, you know, last video was a build video, so trying to get away from a build video this one. But the uh, the nice thing with is I I would just want to get some stuff done. So um, so I think what I would do is a, an expandable um, crane. So I'm trying to trying to think of a design here. So. Um, Thinking of the mechanics of it here and how tall it needs to be. So I think what I'll do is tracks. Just kind of thinking out loud here what my um, mechanics are, and I don't want it overly um, overly huge. And so I need to kind of think about exactly how I want to set this up. And so. All right, so that will go like that, and then I want it too tall, like such. And then it's going to have a cover on the top, so now I'm going to do a gripper. Okay. And then turning a gripper sideways will let me um, lock it into place really well. So it would be like that. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to put in all the these type of uh, sliding track connectors and put them sideways. So what this will do is this gripper will snap onto those in a sideways position and that will um, make it very strong and so I also don't have to keep feeding this power when it stops it will stop. Alright and so I'm gonna expedite this by just copying it. Now paste a couple in here, like so. All right, and we'll merge all these up, and that will now that will give us a locking mechanism essentially. And so, yeah, we'll try to decorate this a little bit, make it look a little bit cool. And I might prefer uh, one by block. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Yeah, we'll see how this turns out. And I'll put a, at least a simulated counterweight on the other side here. And so this should work well for. Kind of moving, just moving stuff around the island. Um, you know, we're going to want to put in a bunch of stuff, and then I'm going to probably cut out some of this just to kind of have you know, the appearance of weight reduction. So um, let's go in here. Just want to make sure this will. Oh, I love it when it goes the wrong direction, and then you're like, what, what are you doing, man? There we go. Perfect. Okay, so that's the end of this crane here. And so now I need to kind of decide what I want for it. It's not that tall, but I think we're going to want... Probably going to want a large winch. Large winch is 150 meters. Um, that's 40 meters. There's no way we use more than 40 meters. I can't imagine that we're going to need more than 40 meters. Um, you know, this is... Let's just do a quick uh, measure to see how tall it is. You know, because pretty much the cable needs to go down to the water. And so you can see where the water is. So if I check, if I go from the top of this all the way down to essentially the water, it should kind of give me a notion of how tall I need the cable. Because it's going to go down right above it. So right there, that is 
12.5 meters. Yeah, so I think a, um, a medium winch should be more than enough. We'll see how it looks, too. If, um, you know, like, see, that's not, see, that's, I don't like the blockiness of it. I think a medium, I think a medium in there is better, like this. Um, yeah, so I think a medium is what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to kind of have that extend out a little bit. And then probably like that. And then I can kind of dress this up a little bit. I'm trying to think how I want this to look. Okay, so that's coming along. All right, good. So this is kind of looking, it's looking what how I want it. All right, that's good. So I think like this. Right, so that uh, so that winch head will come out, and that will give us our extension. Yep. Yeah, and probably put a spotlight on that, so whatever is underneath the winch can be illuminated. But that's just kind of our. Uh, Right, so that's kind of, I'll probably work on that a little bit, but so that's that. And then I want to build, um, you know, what looks like a counterweight on here. You know, in, in real life, you know, so say you're picking up, you know, so the longer the arm, the more torque. So say you're picking up one kilogram here, or let's say one ton here. Um, if you put 10 tons here, uh, because of the long arm, you know, that one ton could be creating as much force as the 10 tons here. And so that's why you want kind of a large-ish um, counterweight. And so essentially, you know, you think about you have a short wrench, it takes a lot more effort to... Um, to turn that short wrench than it does to turn a long wrench. And so what you'll get is um, on this track head, you'll get bending um, because, you know, if I left it like this and I try to pick up a ton, it's going to try to pull this head down. Well, if you put weight and excessive weight, so you put 10 tons here, um, as you pick this ton up, this weight's already pushing down, so it keeps it in balance. Um, and what I'm going to actually do is I think, do I put a, I think I put a sliding counterweight in there just for funsies. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put a sliding counterweight in there for funsies. Uh, we'll do that. Let me look at some tower cranes really quick. That will, uh, it's always nice to have a little inspiration. Um, you know, tower cranes work in the same principle. Let me bring that up. And then you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, so you can see you have the uh, concrete weights here. And so as the trolley moves forward aft, um, you know, and I was thinking of doing a system with a trolley, but the issue is you need to, the arm has to be as long as you want it to be because it doesn't extend. So this one will extend. And so as the weight goes out, um, you can also, there are also systems where the counterweight moves backwards. So as you go out more this way, the counterweight moves backwards and that balances it out. Um, so that's kind of kind of the thought process there. So I don't want to I don't want to make it overly complicated, but um, be kind of cool to have a little something here. So let me just kind of decide where how far out I want the counterweight to go. So let's say there for the counterweight. I don't want it to be excessive, and I don't want this crane to be enormous. You know, I also don't want it to be all. 
too expensive. We're kind of trying to save some money here, or trying to make some money here, and so this could just, you know, this is going to cost a little. All right, so now I will put in, um, it was actually fine, I think, where that will, yeah, let's do this. Um, use one of these tracks here and I don't know how much I actually need the weight um, I think since they're concrete in real life what I'll do is weight blocks and I will just find the color this is the color here that um, that actually gets rid of them uh, the annoying dots um, I would like uh, again I was gonna say a suggestion to the devs but you know again I haven't filled out the um, I haven't filled out a request yet, or a uh, bug tracker request yet, so I should just do that instead of just kind of saying, hey, do this. I should put it in the right place. Um, so the thought process on this, this counterweight slides aft as this boom goes out, and that um, counteracts the uh, force here. And then what you'd want is... Kind of have more cent you have more forward weight than you have um, aft weight, and so I'm going to kind of simulate that here by just kind of making um, asymmetrical. Um, yeah, make them asymmetrical like that, so they kind of look like how the concrete weights look, where they're um, a little asymmetrical. All right, and so as uh, this boom goes out, this will go uh, rearwards. Let me just check the distances here. If I made them, um, so let's see. The distance is 8.75 meters. What's the distance on this? That is 3 meters. So I'm trying to think. Um, so uh, probably I think it just let me get it accurate. Um, so do 8.75 divided by three, so about 2.91. So uh, for every, I'm trying to think how we do the distance here. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Um, so essentially, as this boom goes out, these the counterweights will go afterwards. And that will just counteract the mass of the um, of it. You know, using counterweights in game actually does work and is helpful um, because it allows you to uh, balance out the loads. All right, and then let me uh, start to. I think I'm going to declutter some of this. I kind of want um, kind of want some open design on some of this. So yeah, like this. So I think every I think like that probably. I don't want this completely enclosed, and then I'll color the um, the boom a certain color. There we go. So I kind of like that. That um, you know, you'd want to cut the weight down of the boom, and you'll notice, like the picture I brought up there, it, it uses tubing anyways. Um, not completely enclosed. I just make it look a little bit more interesting and then I can do some different colors and have it look interesting. Okay, so there's the extendable boom section there. Alright, so that boom will slide out. All right, so let's start hooking some of this up to the seat. Um, so I need to start working on the actual. Uh, let's do this. Let's save this. Oh, no, go out here. Let's save this back up to Cape House backup. Let me load up the the dump truck here. And what I want to do is I want to look at. I want to grab the same section that I had last time. 
Um, I don't actually want this. That's not what I want. So let me, I'll just do a custom here. All right, so what I want to do here is, um, so boom will be, so left, right will be rotation. Uh, boom out will be W, boom in will be S, so that will be 2. So 2 is here, that's pitch, that's just going to be, this is going to turn into uh, boom extension here. So what I'll do here is I'm going to turn the seat to high sensitivity, and then if it's, give me a threshold please, thank you. Um, and so if it's negative 1, negative 1. So if that's a negative one, and if this is one, so that will be out and in. So that will be out, that will be in. Okay, and then what I want to do is, stick up, down, counter. So increment will be uh, 0.25, I think, enabled. Ma minimum is negative 0.25, maximum is 0.25, and then we'll do an or, so Go or, or, and then a not. So essentially every time the, because um, the, this type of linear speed, linear um, track is set on speed. So my speed is going to be 0.25, and I can change that if I want to go out faster or slower. Um, maximum speed I want is 0.25 out or negative 0.25 in. So that sets my speed in or out. So if I press W, it's going to set it. To 0 0.25 to go out. Now, when I set, when I press S, it's going to go to negative one, and it's going to do uh, point negative 0.25 in. If either of these are not pressed, uh, uh, for example, like say I let go of W or S, I want it to read a speed of zero, and so that's what that is. That will reset it to zero. All right, and then um, this is pitch is going to change to uh, boom extension. All right, so that's boom extension. There we go. All right, so that goes to boom extension. Then I need to add gripper. That's an output gripper. All right, and so I believe it's a release. Um, so if either of these are pressed, you want to release the gripper. So this this will auto lock. So every time that I try to extend or um, retract the boom, it will detach the gripper. And then when I stop extending or detach the boom, i.e. I want it to stay in place, it will attach the gripper. That's my locking mechanism. All right, so let's go to the seat. We need to configure the seat. So to make it work like that, where it goes, um, where it goes, you know, one negative one, we want to make it reset. We want to make it boom extension. And we want to turn the sensitivity up to 100%. At 100%, uh, if I press W, it goes instantly to, to one. If I press S, it goes instantly to negative one. So that's how we want that set up. That is the same type of thing there. All right, let's uh, hook up a little bit here. All right, so boom extension is going to go to this uh, linear track there because that's at speed. Gripper here, as you can see, is going to be release connector. So that will auto lock into place. Uh, winch down and winch up. All right, and I forget what those are. All right, let's give it a look. So I have a velocity pivot for my rotation, and that um, allows me to go 360 degrees. So, so as you can see, we can uh, rotate 360 degrees, and then I'm going to do boom extension, so W. Here comes the boom.
And so this will allow me to load, unload anything that I need to, get things out of the water when it's hairy. And you see I have nice long reach here. So what I'm thinking of doing here is... up oh, those are off-centered. The, uh... Some, are they off-centered? Those looking at my little design notches there. I Yeah, see that one there starts to go off-centered. That one's there. Okay. So I want to do my counterweight as well. I'll start working on that now. I have to go to the workbench over here. Okay. All right, so let's start doing this here. Let me fix this. Something's off-centered here, so let's, let's look above it. Yeah, so they start getting off centered. Yeah, they were good here, and then they get off centered. So, one of the reasons I didn't want to paint this first is uh, I kind of want to get it where it needs to be first. I'm screwing this all up here. Um, yeah, this one here I started, I screwed it up, and I never fixed it. Okay, and then I will delete out the other ones here in a second. Let me make sure they match up. Those all match up till here. Okay. And where, where am I at here? Right there. I think I kind of want that filled in, so I just need to match this setup here, and then, yeah, okay. I think this will all be sealed here. All right, so go like that. That fixes that issue. Oh, come on. Get out of there. All right, and so let's look at um, working on the counterweight here. So I don't think I ought to do this. I think a distance sensor is just going to be best. I'm trying to okay put a distance sensor in here. Cut one more in there again. Oh, get out of there. All right, so we have a distance sensor in there. Let's add that to the micro. All, right, all my nodes are done. Let me move this so that I, I can do one more and not have it hit anything. All right, uh, let's add in a distance sensor. distance. All right, so where's my distance sensor here? All right, so this is just going to give me whole numbers here. So I'm not getting tiny little numbers. That will keep the delta from oscillating too much. Um, no. All right, so uh, this is essentially going to be if the distance is increasing, you want to uh, move the counterweight out. If the distance is decreasing, you want to move the counterweight in. Um, And then what I'll do is I will tune in the delta so I can put in a actual number there. So once the delta, uh, maybe not. I'll figure something out here. Um, this is, I don't know how much is actually going to um, actually you know be useful or necessary, let's put it that way. 
Um, we're not picking up huge weights. So it probably doesn't matter. Um, you know, you can pick up, if you're counterweighted, you can actually pick up some pretty heavy weights. Um, but if you're not counterweighted, you're going to have issues. So the weights on these are not going to be um, all that high, I don't think. so. But I just want to kind of see proof of concept if how this works. All right, so let's hook up the distance sensor. And then counterweight in will be down, and then that will be this. So the, this, this type of sliding track works differently. As you press up, it goes out, and then as soon as you let go of it, it stops. So just for those who don't use linear tracks much. All right, let's kind of look at this. All right, so as that goes out, is my weight doing anything? It is not. Okay. Is that an electricity issue? It appears to be not. Um, okay. All right, so let's any, uh, let's let me go back here. Kind okay, of annoying that I got to run over here. I bet it's below the f floor. I bet the floor is putting it below one, and it never gets above one. So, yeah. So the floor will get rid of the decimal places. Well, I bet it's below the decimal places. So maybe not. Okay. Anyways, I will need to hook up some electricity here. A lot of this isn't hooked up to electricity anyways, but um, okay, all that's done. Oh, <laughs> I know why it's not sliding. I didn't put any tracks in there. That's why. Okay. I didn't put track in there yet. Dummy mistake. Um, there we go. So it's going to want a gap, I think, in here. I think I can actually put those back, maybe, when I get the track in here. But um, let me see. No, it's not going to let me put them in there. That's fine. It doesn't want anything on the track. That'll be all right. Um, try hooking the floor back up, see if that will do it. Yeah, it's just, the floor should be fine because it's greater than zero. It's not. That actually might return a zero. We'll see. Um, I'll run it again, see if this works. Wish my workbench was close to my crane now, so I don't have to run back and forth, but um, not the end of the world. Yep, so it could be the floor issue. I should have left that off until I tested it. But let us see. Alright, um, let's get the floor out of there and check it. Right. I'll also, if this doesn't work, I'll test the um, test it independently. There we go. See it go out. Beautiful. Okay, so that's working. That's our counterweight. And so I just need to I need to tune that in. What I could do, which actually I think is a better idea, let's do this. I'm going to make a regular linear track pieces. And I'm just going to set the um, the speed to, you know, relative to what uh, that is. So. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So we'll 
Go like this. Put some more weight blocks in here. Merge these to those. All right, and then I want some do regular these tracks here in white. And then those will go there, like so. All right, and now uh, what I'll do is, this will be a little bit simpler. So I don't need all this. I don't need the distance sensor. I don't need the delta. I don't need all that. Um, I don't need any of that. So this will get rid of a bunch of crap, too. Gone, gone. This will be an output to counterweight. Counterweight. All right, output to counterweight, and all I'm going to do is um, let's do function x times what was it? Uh, uh, Two point nine one. Okay, so that was just the speed, or that was the distance. Um, calculation there. If you remember this was uh, this is this distance is 2.91 times this distance. So I'll hook up electricity just so that I don't have to do it later. And this goes to these. Alright, let's try it now. And then, so that's gonna need a gripper for locking as well, but um, do that in a second. There we go. So that should be moving. Um, it actually might not need a gripper. It's never going to tip. So yeah. So you can see that counterweight will now keep itself perfectly in in uh, phase with the um, with the mass of the. Uh, I don't like the look of it with that kind of reverse step. It looks funky. So I'll put. Um, I'll make it look a little bit more normal, but as you can see, so as we lift up weight with the um, with the crane, that counterweight goes out and it counters our motion. All right, so let's do a quick lift. Let's do a quick lift test. And so what I'm going to do here is um, we'll go to. Rope logic. Actually, no, I won't do rope logic. Uh, what I will do is undo that and then do that. Trying to see how that aligns. I think it needs to go up one more. Connector here. All right, let's do that. Uh, to do rope logic, uh, I had rope logic. There we go, and let's hook it like that. So that will be pre-hanging. This is, I think it's separate color, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, just make these colors look close, so I want to check it. Um, and then, let's save it real quick. I haven't saved in a while. All right, and let's go ahead and make something obnoxious to lift. So make something obnoxious. So let's do weight blocks, because that's going to be the, the worst. Um, and this will just kind of see how much weight I can yank with this crane. And it's not that this one block is probably going to cause us any issues, but that'll be 
symmetrical there. Um, I didn't measure it across. Let me measure it across. That is 8. So that won't do. I want it um, an odd number. 7. Uh, what is that? 12. Okay. Alright, so thinking this is the center here. It appears to be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and three and three, that's it. Alright. Um Alright, and then what's this way? Fifty three eighty two mass, so I forget what Vrigio is, but not not fifty three eighty two, I'll tell you that. Fifty three eighty two is reasonably heavy. Alright. And then put that all the way down the bottom here. I I don't want it to clonk on the bottom, I just want it to sit there. Alright. You down there, son? There it is. Okay, good. Ooh, the issue with this crane though is the um The issue with the crane is it starts with a certain, you know, the arm is a certain length, so, um, but I don't think it's going to cause us problems here. You know, this this rotation speed seems on the slow end, but the benefit of having a nice slow rotation speed is that um, when you're actually carrying a heavy load, you don't want it jerking around. You know, force equals mass times acceleration, so the more... That's the more the weight you're picking up is accelerating around, the higher the force, and it just beats the hell out of your crane, and it makes it really tough. Um, okay, what is, I can't remember, oh, I think it's up, down, there we go, up and down are already set for boom. Let's put this in the old drinky poo. And I'll just get it close here. Get it close and I'll go swim down and I'll attach it. So this will make a nice little test. Alright. Then I can grab the end of this connector. And there we go. I. I grabbed the rope. How did I grab the rope? That sucks. Um, that is so annoying. That is very annoying, that. I don't know how I grabbed the end of the rope. Okay, not the end of the world, but I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to reattach it and have to reload it, which would have been misery. All right, so let's try lifting this. This is a this is a big ask. This is heavy. Yeah, this is uh, doing it. Now in real life, this weight would be um, easier to lift in the water, and then once it got in the air, it would be much much harder. Um, that's just because the density of the water is helping to try to push that block out. So this is beautiful. So this is working really well. Take a little picture. I think once I finish up this crane here, we will call it. So that's it's. Uh, so that's your stretch right there. That's your um, rope stretch. That's why it won't go up any further. Um, that's fine. I'm not going to be lifting something this heavy ever. Um, really, this is just the test. So that um, I think is gives me enough weight to um, to work with. And so I want to extend the boom out. And so my counterweight goes back. I forget what the counterweight's weighing, but, you know, not what this big weight does. But, you know, again, uh, the torque, you know, uh, think of leverage. The longer the arm is here on this crane, so you see how far out we're putting that weight. Um, that has a nice long torque arm, and so that counterweight is trying to tip it back. But as you can see... I have no problem, and so this weight's excessive compared to what I'm what I'm going to be doing. So um, that's fine. You know, this is mostly pick up Rigo, pick up any other things. I kind of like that plane in the view. All right, and so I think we'll call it there. Um, 
this was good progress um, getting that up up and running um, you know that that I think is is a pretty good uh, step in the right direction you know I wish we could get that to go up higher but that's where the rope stretch is um, so it, it's not the end of the world um, I'm like I said I'm very rarely ever gonna lift anything this heavy um, this is gonna be mostly putting some cargo maybe on a boat um, pulling some tanks off uh, putting Virgo on I might put a rack here for Virgo to sit in um, or lifting other vehicles um, you know so that would be uh, that's pretty uh, pretty utilitarian and pretty good so um, I want to make this remote control so I'll work on that um, probably off screen uh, I, I don't know um, people might be interested in seeing how the remote controls work so I uh, might slap it together what I'll probably do is just do it off screen and then um, I'll kind of walk you through it uh, but uh, yeah so that's making good progress in the house the fuel getting the fuel working was big for me I needed to be able to refuel the KD did especially and so now having a crane is nice as well all right so we'll see you in the next one bye